A quick new idea daily from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. From the COVID-19 vaccine to the common flu shot, what underlies the fear and hesitancy that many people have towards vaccines? Tara Haley is a freelance science and multimedia journalist with bylines at Forbes, NPR, Scientific American, and Slate. In her 2016 talk, Tara speaks to vaccine hesitancy as a global health threat, while remaining hopeful that we can address the public's concerns with information and empathy. It was just over a half century ago that every summer gripped parents across the world especially the Western world, with fear. In its heyday of the 1940s and 1950s, polio outbreaks led to public closures. People avoided friends and neighbors out of sheer terror that they would be struck by the disease or their children would. The unpredictable and invisible threat of polio made familiar places like playgrounds and swimming pools suddenly terrifying. So the arrival of the polio vaccine was like a liberation. The enemy previously lurking behind every corner had been vanquished. It was the tremendous relief that earlier generations felt when they no longer lost children to tetanus or diphtheria or yellow fever. <clears throat> More vaccines have since followed against rubella, hepatitis A and B, pneumococcal and meningococcal disease, and more. We completely eradicated smallpox, a horrifying disease that left those who didn't die scarred for life. We now find ourselves in a century when we can beat back more than two dozen diseases that once killed millions. And the biggest threat to public health, or one of them, is not the diseases themselves, but vaccine hesitancy. What happened? How did we get to this point? Well, when my first son was born, I turned down a vaccine. I didn't think it was necessary. I didn't understand it. I wasn't dumb or stupid. I was actually in grad school. But I was scared, just like hundreds of other parents I've spoken to in the years that I've been reporting on this issue. Now, to be clear, I am talking about vaccine hesitancy and refusal, but I am not talking about that very tiny percentage of people who spout conspiracy theories or show up at government meetings spreading misinformation about vaccines. I'm talking about the fence sitters. If we're going to address vaccine hesitancy, we have to address the underlying processes that lead people to believe in fears lacking any scientific basis. Polio returned to Syria when civil unrest interrupted polio vaccinations there. And in my home country, an outbreak of measles at Disneyland in a country that eliminated measles 16 years ago spread to half a dozen states and two other countries. That outbreak showed the power of a disease to return when vaccination rates drop. Of course, Vaccines are not risk-free either. Nothing in life is. Mountains of research, however, have shown us that the risk of a very serious vaccine reaction is extremely, extremely rare. Most side effects, like fever and soreness, are mild and temporary. And there's the rub. Vaccines have been so effective at reducing so much disease that <laughs> we don't fear it anymore. Who fears smallpox anymore? Who fears polio? Very, very few. Fear of what a disease, excuse me, fear of what a vaccine might otherwise do has replaced fear of the disease. The psychology term for this is availability bias. The information that's most available or accessible to us stays at the forefront of our minds. We hear about a shark attack. We fear sharks the next time we go to the beach instead of riptides or drowning. Heartbreaking stories of vaccine injury, true or not, are more available to parents online and through the grapevine. They haven't seen measles or polio in their communities, so why fear them? The measles, mumps, rubella vaccine is given to children around the same time that autism becomes easier to diagnose. If parents notice autistic symptoms not long after their children are vaccinated, it feels natural to blame the vaccine, despite all scientific evidence to the contrary. Our brains seek patterns and cause and effect makes the world make sense. It's incredibly difficult to deprogram that, especially when emotion is involved. Our brains are incredibly protective 
of what we believe, and we seek out information to confirm that, those beliefs. We also engage in motivated reasoning to deflect threats to those beliefs at every turn. That means that giving parents facts is not going to change their mind. As scientists are learning in ongoing research, there will be no single strategy to fostering vaccine confidence. A complex problem requires complex solutions. Sometimes harnessing those biases can work. When the norm is to vaccinate and everyone around us is vaccinating, people are more likely to follow suit. Research into genuine vaccine risks, which do exist, needs to continue, ongoing all the time. People must be reassured that scientists are constantly looking for any kind of risks associated with vaccines, assessing their safety, and ensuring that their risks are outweighed by the benefits. Public health messages, sometimes they can target specific fears of particular communities. But more than anything, confronting vaccine hesitancy requires engagement. Instead of dismissing or mocking or fearing or laughing at, mocking those who fear vaccines, we need to listen to them, genuinely listen. When we come across someone who fears vaccines, We won't get very far by laughing, mocking, accusing, but we might get somewhere bit by bit with some thoughtful communication and some empathy. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded in Oslo, Norway. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Oslo. Want to listen to more TEDx talks? Explore the entire archive on the TEDx YouTube channel. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening and see you tomorrow.